I had killed a man. A man who looked like me. And nothing happened. Where are you? You can call me the goat. Are you some kind of clone of me? I am like you, sheep. You're what they expected me to be. And your ancestors. They saw you. They saw in me. You. Did they see you as I do? They saw in me what you could be. And what you could have been. And you think you're God. I am what you would expect of me. I am that which I am. Well, I'm not impressed. So you have understood my plan for you, for us? There can only be one end to this, Sam. Oh, but I beg to differ. How so? Did you really think I would give up my life for yours? But if you have already come to the conclusion you shall not do so, what makes you think that I wouldn't have come to the same conclusion myself? Oh, but I beg to differ. How so? I know what I'm holding in my hand, and I don't see you with a gun. Oh, but I beg to differ with you there as well. Just because you do not see a thing doesn't mean it isn't there, or rather it doesn't mean it isn't what you think it isn't. He holds up his palm at me, and the air fizzles and then sparks and crackles. Ripples of energy distort my view. Then I feel the waves hit me, and I realize it isn't just my perception of the room they are distorting, but the underlying reality of the room itself. Everything warps and bends, and I realize he has managed to find a way to harness the proton-proton pillar released by the artificial sun through his own body. It was the effect that had occurred immediately before the sun had collapsed into a black hole. Are you insane? I demand you'll kill us both. Death means nothing to me. Soon you shall feel the same. To hell with you. I scream over the gale as the atoms begin fissioning at the seams. I level my gun at him and blast off around. He just throws his head back and laughs. The bullet struggles ahead against the concentrated matter waves. Sam gives me the evil eye and clenches his palm into a fist. The bullet demolecularizes and its constituent atomic components implode in a sparkle until all the dust that's left of them has been vaporized into utter obliteration. Huge empty tears open up in the fabric of space-time which have enough gravity to lift us both off our feet. I use all the strength in my body to pull my now exponentially heavy arms towards each other and flick the automatic switch on the firearm. Although he is unchanged by the electronic disturbance and therefore is making an easy target, everything else in the room than Sam is being lifted up and spun into the widening crevices in the dimensional fibers of the local universe. And as I try to level the weapon at him to squeeze off his second volley, I realize that my own particles are being torn apart too. The sound of the gun going off is swallowed up in the muted gale of the molecule-length waves being absorbed and dispersed by atomic nuclei-length waves. The bullet arcs out of the gun in a path that is aimed to cut Sam in half. Each meets with the same end as the first had only even sooner after leaving the cartridge until the final one is triggered while still in the barrel. In each place where the bullets disappeared into the ether, a new, small, spiraling vortex opens up in the air, and as the bullet goes off inside the gun, I can only watch helplessly paralyzed as my arm begins to be swallowed up around the outside of a miniature black hole. It should be scorchingly painful for my atoms to be ripped apart but because the nerves do not have the opportunity to cathex the message to my brain before being disassembled down into subatomic quanta and then evaporated, I can only watch my right hand be spiraled around the zero point event horizon of the pin-sized pulsing hole in reality like bloody water flowing down the brain. As I would have told me if I were you, detective, there isn't enough room for both of us in this universe. He smiles at Cheshire Grin as the rest of my body in the room begin to disappear, and all sinks into a glow of darkness.